Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing my birthday nails. We're back to extra, extra long nails. So I'm really excited to be able to talk like this, but today is my actual birthday. And if you guys did not know, Camila's birthday is a few days from mine. So we're gonna be incorporating her birthday theme as well. So we're gonna be doing butterflies and flowers for her birthday theme. And then it is actually my golden birthday. So if you guys did not know what a golden birthday is, it's pretty much when your age you're turning lands on the same date if that makes sense. So I'm turning 28 on August 28th. That makes it my golden birthday. So we're gonna be adding tons of gold, tons of crystals, sparkles, bling, and I'm actually doing shiny top coat. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. right into today's video we're gonna be starting off by prepping my natural nail we're gonna be doing some very very long nails for today's video but first we got to prep our nails so I'm starting off with my basic prep if you guys have not seen my videos before I do this prep in all of my videos that I do on actual human hands so we're gonna start off by buffing off the shine from my natural nail I'm just using my ephod at a speed of 4,000 rpms along with that I'm using a mandrel bit from profiles backstage along with their purple sanding band in fine grit. I absolutely love those sanding bands, so definitely recommend those. And I typically use a needle bit for this process, but I've been gravitating towards this one a lot more often now. I really, really like it. It's just a tapered barrel one, and I feel like it does just as good of a job. It gets into those hard to reach areas to remove that excess dead skin. Now I'm just quickly buffing off the dead skin from my cuticle without having to cut or nip anything off. I prefer this method just because I feel like it's a little bit safer and you don't have to be scared of over cutting or hurting yourself. I'm going to be applying my tips. These are from Amazon. They have been my favorite very recently. These are squared, very, very long tips but they are not C-curved, which is reason why I really like them. With C-curved tips, they are amazing. However, you have to build up the acrylic a lot, and when I am in a time crunch, I prefer not to have a C-curved tip, so I really, really like these. Now I'm going in, I just went ahead and applied them with my Young Nails brush on glue. Now I'm going in and just very quickly blending that tip to my natural nail. I want my acrylic to lay perfectly, so I'm going to be blending that tip. That helps minimize any kind of little lumps in that area. Now I'm taking some scissors that did not work to cut these tips. I forgot my nail tip cutters. I am doing my nails at home. So I always feel like I forget one thing or the other. So now I'm just switching to actual nail clippers and I'm going to be cutting one side then the other and then just bending it off so that I do not get that ugly bent white streak that you typically get when you don't cut it properly. I want the option to be able to have the clear tip. I don't know where I'm going to incorporate that in the set, but I wanted to make sure that I had the perfect clear tip just in case I wanted to add that in somewhere. I'm going in with my hand file. This one is actually from Not Polish. I also forgot my hand files, but I absolutely love this one as an alternative to my go-to files. I love Zebra Grit and the Not Polish ones are really, really good. So that's why I ended up choosing this one to use for today's video. I'm going to be going in and just filing the sides of the nails, making sure that everything is nice and flush to my natural nail while making sure that that shape is nice and crisp, especially in that tip area. You can always go in and skip this step, but I prefer to pre-shape always. Now we're just dehydrating the nail with a little bit of Young Nail Swipe and a lint-free wipe. Zoom in through our prep, we're going to be adding the acrylic primer from Kiara Sky. I have recently switched my clients to this primer, so I figured I would start using it on myself too to show you guys exactly how I like it or how I don't like it. So if you guys did not see the one of Britney's nails, um, she recently had an allergic reaction to one of the many products that I use on her and this actually helped her. She did update me if you guys were looking for an update on her nails. This actually worked. So I ended up switching out the primer and the monomer for both Kiara Sky products and it worked lovely. She did not have any flare ups or any discomfort which I absolutely am excited about. So we'll see how it goes. 
But for now, we're gonna be grabbing some of the Kiara Sky Monomer. It's been my go-to lately. And I'm actually gonna be taking the Monomer Neutralizer Drops from Not Polish. It smells so good, and because I am doing the nails out of my house, I wanna make sure that that smell does not seep and reap through the entire house. So we're gonna be adding those dots. I just added like four or five of them, and it helps neutralize that smell immediately. So we're gonna go right into our acrylic application. For today's video, I'm actually using a custom mix of my own. I shared it not that long ago on one of my videos, so I will leave all of the ingredients linked down below. I honestly do not remember what color specifically I used, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, I used it on one of my practice hands. I love this nude color, so I think I took two or three colors, mixed them together, but like I said, I'll go ahead and leave the exact colors linked down below, so if you guys wanna mix it yourself as well. I believe they are all not polished colors. So I'm just going in and I'm gonna be adding an ombre to this thumb, but then I realized that I forgot that that tip was the one that had that little white streak of the bent nail. So I ended up just fully covering that entire nail with the color nude. And then I figured I would just go in and add that clear ombre to one of my other nails. Now, like I mentioned, I need lots of gold as it is my golden birthday. So I'm actually mixing two different glitter acrylics. One is the OMG number 33 from Not Polish. I love this glitter. It's like a silvery with a little bit of gold in it. And then I'm mixing it with Crown Me from Vanessa Nails. I recently purchased a bunch of her acrylics and I'm really excited to be using it for today's video, but we're gonna be mixing both of them to kind of mute it down a little bit, but also give it a lot of gold vibes. I love gold recently, but I feel like it was just a smidge too yellow for my liking, so I went ahead and muted it a little bit with that not polished glitter. And then of course I'm just going in with that same nude color and we're gonna be ombre it. I always start mid nail and work my way down and then work my way up. So as you can see, I'm focusing on that ombre and then I'm going to kind of fix it up a little bit by just adding a smidge more glitter over top. I really, really like how it kind of mutes some of the glitter, but then I bring it back to life with some more glitter over top. I don't know why, I just feel like it looks really, really cool. So then I'm gonna be finishing off that cuticle area by adding a very small bead. Make sure you're holding your finger in a downward position. Always, always, always when you're working in that cuticle area, otherwise they will flood everywhere. Especially what I've noticed when using the acrylic primer from Kiara Sky, it's a little bit on the thicker side. So sometimes you may feel like the acrylic is going to overflow, but it still stays nice and put as long as you hold it downwards and you have your perfect liquid to powder ratio. So now on the middle finger, I'm actually gonna be doing that clear ombre that I wanted to do on the thumb. So I'm starting off in the middle section with a small bead of acrylic, blending it downwards, making sure that that blend is nice and perfect towards the clear. And then I'm adding another bead up at the cuticle area, blending that downwards to the first bead. And I'm actually gonna be leaving this nail alone until I'm ready to encapsulate. That clear will work as the additional acrylic that we need at the tip while also creating that perfect clear ombre. And then of course for the ring finger, I'm just gonna be doing a basic nude color. And then on the pinky, we're gonna be doing that ombre again with glitter.
Now I do talk about it a lot on my channel, how I like to add my colored acrylic glitters or anything that I'm gonna be encapsulating very, very thin, but make sure that it is nice and opaque. So for the pinky, I'm gonna be going through exactly how I encapsulate, and I'm simply just adding a good amount to that tip, and then I'm just sprinkling it or kind of pushing it upwards to create that very easy ombre effect. And as you can see, it's nice and see-through, very sparse on that middle section, and then very, very opaque towards the tip. It is extremely thin when I'm placing it on there, and I like to do this not only to save product, but also if I mess up my ombre, I can go in and layer it on a little bit more without the fear of it being already too thick. So I always, always recommend if you struggle creating an ombre, always start very thin and then build your way up. And if you do thin layers and it's perfect, go ahead and just encapsulate and add the extra thickness with your clear. Leave the ombre alone. Do not try to fix it and do not try to make it thicker with the color. Otherwise, sometimes you will mess it up. So kind of just a little tip of how I create my ombres. Now once I'm done with my base acrylic design, we're gonna be going in and encapsulating. For this step, I am using the Not Polish Clear Acrylic. It's my favorite clear, super, super clear, and the consistency is perfect in my opinion. So we're gonna be going in and adding a good amount to the top of every single nail, especially the ones that have glitter. You wanna make sure you're really pressing it down into the glitter and making sure that you build it up nicely to get that strength that we need for the length that we have. Yeah, I know you guys see that my nails are super, super long, so I want to make sure that I am layering that on there very well. Now again, for this middle finger, because we are creating that clear ombre, I'm going to be adding a lot more acrylic to that tip to make sure that it is the perfect thickness. Now, I have been obsessed with hand filing my nails. I feel like you get the perfect finish and it just looks so, so good. I feel like a lot of people are a lot more confident with hand filing. So by all means, if you like to hand file, go for it. And don't feel like you need to use an e-file just because everyone else is. So I'm actually going in with this same hand file on the sides, making sure that that shape is nice and perfect. And then I'm just going very, very quickly over top of all the nail surfaces to make sure that it is nice and smooth. And a really good indicator of whether you need to file a little bit more or not is you're gonna be seeing a night white a nice white cast over top of the nail where you're filing with your hand file. And if you see any little areas that still look kind of very close to the color that you laid, that means that it has not been touched with your hand file. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but if you're watching it, you'll be able to see. So for example, if you have any little ridges or divots or anything like that, you'll be able to see that because the hand file will touch the raised parts first and then the lower parts of the acrylic is not gonna be touched so it'll be a different color. I hope that makes sense. But that's a really nice way of kind of seeing whether you need to file more in a certain area or not. And the lovely hand cramps happen. So I thought it was funny to kind of just leave that footage in because it is real, you guys. My hands start cramping pretty much at the time that I start filing my ring finger. And the pinky, the pinky is the worst. I never show me filing my pinky because I always do all kinds of crazy hand movements when I'm trying to do that. Now I'm actually gonna be going in with my e-file and for the cuticle area, I do prefer to use my e-file just because I am a little bit more confident in that versus a hand file. A hand file, obviously they have rounded versions of a flat hand file, but I like to use the rectangle ones and sometimes it can be a little bit scary to get up on that rounded cuticle area because you can cut yourself. 
So I'm gonna be going in with my not polish bit and just kind of filing that surface, making sure that it is nice and smooth. And I'm actually gonna be sealing the cuticle area with this bit that I also found in my bit stash. And I'm just going in, my e-file is at 11,000 RPMs for all of the e-filing process at the end. I'm just going in around that cuticle area and just gently filing with that making sure that I'm holding it very, very well, very light pressure on that handpiece. I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to over file either. I'm taking this block buffer that I also found in my stash and I'm just going to be buffing away that surface, making sure everything is nice and smooth. We're going to be doing some nail art. So I want to make sure that everything is super smooth just because at this point I still don't know where I'm going to do the nail art. Now I'm going in and cleaning the surface of my nails with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. And then we're going to be going into our nail art application. Now because we're going to be trying to incorporate as much gold as possible, I figured I would go ahead and use these gold butterflies on my thumb. I don't like having anything super bulky on my thumbnails, so I figured I would just go ahead and use some stickers. And these are an easy, easy fix when it comes to not figuring out what you want to do, just throw on some stickers and you're good to go. So I'm just going to be adding three stickers on that nude nail. And I'm actually using these tweezers. These are tweezers that I absolutely use on my eyebrows. So don't judge me. Like I said, I'm doing my nails at home. So I'm using what I can. And tweezers was one of the other things that I forgot to bring with me. But if you guys are interested in checking out these tweezers, these are my absolute favorite for my eyebrows. So 10 out of 10, I definitely recommend these. I will leave them linked down below for you guys. And because birthday nails can never be birthday nails if they do not have bling, we're gonna be adding some gem gel from Not Polish, applying that in the area that I'm going to be applying crystals to. And we're gonna be slathering on a bunch of crystals, a bunch of bulky stuff. So I wanna make sure that I'm adding a good amount. I'm gonna just start off on one corner with one big crystal and I basically just start layering on. I do this a lot with a lot of my crystal applications. I never know what, what I'm doing until I start and I just start layering on there. And I do wanna apologize that my camera just hates me a lot of the time recently. So I apologize for the fact that it is a little bit blurry on a lot of the parts um, from here on out. Now we're gonna be also adding these beautiful flowers that had been trending during springtime. I'm very late to use them, but my baby girl's theme is butterflies and flowers for her birthday. So I figured I would go ahead and incorporate both into this nail with the gold also for my golden birthday. So we're layering on gold crystals from Kiara Sky. I'm layering on these beautiful butterflies that I got from a cart, but I'm not quite sure if they still sell them. But if they don't have them anymore, I will leave similar ones for you guys to purchase. And then the flowers are from Profiles Backstage. I love them. I'm adding smaller ones and bigger ones and like a slight pink color as well. And then we're gonna be adding a few more butterflies and just kind of bringing them down like ombre type of vibe and adding some tiny crystals in between as well. Now, I did not know until I cured this nail that those flowers were actually color changing. So these are white and a very light pink that I applied and now they turned into like a peachy color and a darker peach color, which I'm super excited about because that is also the color of my baby girl's birthday. So I was really excited when I saw that they changed colors. So when heat hits them, they change colors. So that's pretty cool. And then I am going in with that tiny little glue type of thing in between all of the little crystals to make sure that they stay on nice and put. Also from Not Polished, I'll leave it linked down below. I'm not quite sure of the exact name of it. Now we are zooming through and adding the Virgo Zodiac sign. I had to throw that in there. I went back and forth through actually writing Virgo, my birthday or 
the sign and I opted for something more simple. So we're starting off with the frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage and I'm just gonna be outlining that, trying to do my best using the Not Polish Fine Liner brush. And then I'm just gonna be fixing up some of the little areas that are a little bit wonky. You want to cure this in the light before you go in with the next step. So you wanna make sure that it is fully cured before you go in with the chrome. Here I'm just using a gold chrome and my fingertip and we're just gonna rub it in there. It worked perfectly fine and I am actually gonna be taking one of my other fingertips, a clean one of course, and I'm gonna be scraping off the excess. So if you guys have never tried this before, game changer, you don't have to worry about it sticking to the underneath of the nail. And then of course, we're gonna be top coating with Gloss It from Not Polish. You guys should be so excited that I did not do matte. It killed me, not even gonna lie. I kept envisioning that nail with all the crystals with a matte background and it just looked so good. But I did shiny. You guys should be proud of me. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, I just figured it would go really good. Shiny, glittery, sparkly for birthday vibes. So I'm just adding a thin layer of that, especially around those crystals. I already secured them on very well, so I don't have to go over it with the top coat. But I'm still going in between, like especially the ones that are kind of by themselves. I'm going to be putting it in the light for a full minute. I like to do the 90 second option on the not polished light. So make sure you guys check out their light if you guys haven't already. I'm actually skipping the ring finger, going in on the pinky, and then going back in on the ring finger because sometimes the chrome pigment can transfer and I don't want it to transfer on the other nails. So always make sure you clean it up with a paper towel before you put it back in the bottle. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Here's an inside view of the finished nail set. And then I'm going to be inserting the outside view of the same nail set. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.